All right, guys. <clears throat> well, it is an absolutely spectacularly gorgeous spring morning. You're in the collapse of everything. Soon to be a hot, sticky midsummer day in mid-April. <coughs> and it is literally mid-April. It is Monday, April 15th, 2024. Here at Doomsday Trailer, I know there's supposed to be something I'm supposed to be doing on April 15th. I feel like there's some kind of deadline. Uh, anyway, while I try to remember what that is, uh, here to bring you, I don't know, is this the easiest or the hardest rant of the week? That, of course, is my Monday morning good news roundup rant where I go on the mainstream media and medium.com and wherever to look for good news about the state of the planet. Each to start off my week with some good news and... Uh, for the second or is it the third week in a row uh, <clears throat> I have exactly zero good news to report there is exactly zero not one mention of good news anywhere in the mainstream media about what's going on on this planet uh, you know, I've started this, when did I go down in 20 to 10? I've been doing this for like 15 years. And I remember when I first started uh, trying to doom scroll that, uh, you know, it was a lot of work to go through the top 100 uh headlines on the planet in the mainstream media and uh, you know going back to about 2010 it was hard work to find uh, any doom and gloom about how fucked we are uh, and how fucked this civilization this species and this planet is I mean I would it, it, it could take me 45 minutes of digging to uh, find any mention that this planet is fucked. And now it's like the reverse has happened. Uh, it, it, it's, you know, that I think I might have named my rant last Monday. I had that interview with uh, journalism professor Robert Jensen. My first of three interviews with him, I'm thinking, good Lord, maybe five years ago, I was interviewing uh, Robert Jensen about his reading of the, tie, uh, of the tea leaves. And as he said then, all of the news is bad and it is getting worse every day that he had no good news to report years ago. This is a journalism professor, uh, you know, who spends his day uh, in, you know, lo looking at news, basically, and, and how it's presented. And uh, five years ago, all of the news was getting bad. And it's been getting worse every single day, uh, certainly since then. Every single passing day, any shred uh, uh, of good news that was left, has, you know, is shredded. Uh, <clears throat> now, again, depending on uh, 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 this is just a repeat of my last week's rant come to think of it you know depending on how much of a clueless fucking moron you are particularly if you're a one of these little greeny limp dick lefty 
uh, mainstream environmentalists swallowing these bright green lies. Uh, the, the, these bright, brilliant green lies about all these ways that uh, <clears throat> that we're saving the planet, that the United Nations or the Democratic Party or whatever are, are, are saving this planet through all of these unadulterated horseshit, techno-utopian means, uh, which is, you, you know, which is being just, <clears throat> you know, pumped out. <coughs> Uh, the, the, this onslaught of this psychic puke uh, uh, about these bright green lies. Uh, for instance, so, so there's this story today, literally a bright green lie. I, I, I guess this is, uh, the, the, this could be good news for consumers of palm oil, which is pretty much every one of us, because this shits and all and all of this stuff. So this big article, I can't remember. It might have been Bloomberg. I'm not sure. You know, talking about <clears throat> it's there's some good news about palm oil, and 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 that is that the 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 market where, where they're growing this shit more and more is moving from Southeast Asia to Latin America uh, Colombia I think uh, is Colombia Guatemala Ecuador Costa Rica it, it, it is everywhere down there in the in, in these former tropical rainforests and they're sitting there with a straight face, an absolute straight face in the mainstream media, calling this shit deforestation-free palm oil. Sustainable green palm oil. Uh, because the, the definition of being deforestation-free if you're growing uh, this shit, uh, in, in for instance, the Columbia Amazon, just to, just to choose one. So you're, you're, you're growing your goddamn palm oil in the Colombian rainforest if you do not go in there with bulldozers and chainsaws and, you know, obliterate off the face of this planet. Uh, 10,000 acres of primary rainforest to plant your goddamn uh, palm oil. <clears throat> if, if you're not the one who took the trees off, you're not, you, what you're planting is deforestation free, sustainable green palm oil. It, it, you know, if, if five years ago, the previous owner of the land went in there <coughs> and bulldozed and cut all the trees down, sold all the goddamn lumber, uh, went in there, ran some cows through there for a couple of years till the cows r r ran down the uh, r r ran down the soil, and then a a palm oil corporation comes in and buys 10,000 acres of, of uh, what, what was rainforest 10 years ago, but the guy before him is the one who did that, that. You can go on there and you can plant your palm oil on this, uh, 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 on this former primary rainforest and you can get a sustainable deforestation-free palm oil label. And then these clueless fucking moron, uh, little limp dick greeny consumers can go in there and look at their, what is it, their FSC or their RSPO, whatever this bullshit 
uh, little little label on their bottle is. And, and, and you're thinking that, uh, I, I guess, that this palm oil uh, that, that you're using for, or that's in every product on the planet, I, I, I don't know. I guess what was there was some uh, cornfield that the Mayan Indians planted there uh, 3,000 years ago. Uh, so, you know, there, there's no shortage, there, there's no end uh, uh, of this unadulterated horse shit, uh, you know, t t talking about uh, shit like this, deforestation free, uh, there is no such thing as deforestation free palm oil. Every single motherfucking uh, oil palm tree on the face of the planet is growing where probably as recently as two years ago, uh, there, you know, there used to be a, a primary old growth rainforest. Uh, it, 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 it's shit like this you're going to be reading more of this good news uh, than, than you ever can. Uh, so uh, absolutely no shortage of that. So, uh, you know, unless the news is about either declining birth rates or out of the same token that more and more people are pulling, you know, young people are pulling their heads out of their asses, looking at the situation and deciding not to have kids outside of those two stories, there is no good news uh, anywhere to report on the planet. Now, there was a story, which I almost included in here, about how these boomers, <clears throat> you know, people like me, well, of course, not people like me, because I sold my four-bedroom, three-bath, 2,000-square-foot uh, house uh, on the Green Belt in South Austin, and I now uh, live in a tiny, in a one-room, tiny house half the year, and a single-wide trailer half the year, so this doesn't apply to me, but talking about... Uh, how uh, so many boomers, uh, after their kids move out, they're not downsizing. <clears throat> that it, the pattern used to be that as a, you know a young couple would get married, uh, probably buy a two-bedroom house, have their first kid, and you know, then upgrade. The more and more kids they had, the more and more bedrooms they added, and then as their kids moved out, they would downsize to uh, smaller and smaller homes uh, because it's just two old farts living there. Uh, th this was the pattern. In, in, I mean, w when I started selling real estate in the 1980s, this was just the, the, the cycle the housing cycle, but what it's talking about in this thing is that more and more boomers <clears throat> are not downsizing. That there will be two old people, and frequently, uh, even after one of them dies, that there will be one old fart uh, in, in their 70s and 80s living in a four or five bedroom, three bath home. And they have no intention of downsizing. Uh, they're staying in these giant houses. So now these young families come up, including their own children and grandchildren, and uh, and, and and can't uh, and can't find a house to fit their growing families into. Uh, and, and, and that they're getting pinched and, and that these clueless fucking moron uh, breeders, these Gen Zers and these millennials, 
can't afford I I anything uh, bigger than a basically a tiny house or a single wide trailer, and there's no fucking way that they're gonna live in a in a in a tiny house or a single wide trailer. So uh, they're not having children, and so hell yes, every boomer out there. Hang on to your four-bedroom, five-bedroom house. And uh, for every Gen Zer that does not breed because they cannot afford a big enough house for their little planet-eating progeny, this is good news for the planet. I, I wonder the, the, whatever happened to that four-bedroom, three-bath house. I sold in South Austin the last house, I, you know, real house I sold. There's probably five damn kids in it. I was down at the dock last night. Boat pulls in. It's this kind of Brady Bunch situation. So this nice-looking young couple, no way they could have been over 32. They had eight fucking kids between them. That they were, you know, both divorced with kids and bringing the kids along with them. They, the term they use was blended, that we are a blended family. I, I, I mean, this was this couple in their early 30s, eight children, eight children between the two of them. And I'm just thinking, my God, I, 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 I was thinking, where the fuck uh, did, did they put them all? They had to bring two cars. Uh, how the hell does this young couple afford a motorboat? How the hell do they, they, they had to have the boat? Uh, the dude was in a pickup truck uh, hauling the boat. Uh, with two kids in with him, and, and then the woman was, was in the big SUV with six kids in there. It, it took two fucking, it took a pickup truck, it, 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 it took an SUV, it, it took a goddamn motorboat, and, and I'm thinking, where in the fuck uh, do, do these people live? In a nine-bedroom house? Uh... But anyway, so I guess I, there was that good luck. But uh, it, it, anyway, guys, the, the bottom line is, you know, as Robert Jensen was saying five years ago, all of the news is bad. Every bit of it is bad. And every bit of it is getting worse every day, meaning... This planet is more fucked today than it was yesterday, and this planet will be more fucked tomorrow than it is today. That's the definition of all the news is bad, and it's getting worse every day. And it will just continue to get worse and, 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 until... Uh, the downward spiral uh, just finishes, and and we're and, and, and we're all fucked. But right now, it is still a beautiful Monday morning, and uh, I think I have to go to my planet-eating bank to get a goddamn cashier's check while I still can. And you need to go get that lizard like that. Still an okay day to be a lizard on the planet. I guess the lizards are still finding bugs to eat. <clears throat> Amazingly. My guys.